الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد علي الحبة في الله one of the most controversial topics and I usually choose to avoid these type of topics as they are very extensive in depth topics which the ordinary Muslim should not be involving themselves with and these are issues which do not have a direct impact on how we practice our Islam on a daily basis however unfortunately there are many of the youth and others who busy the youth with these types of issues and from amongst those issues and even to the fact to where they say that these are the most important issues so it's not about your prayer, it's not about your aqidah, your creed, and how you come closer to Allah and your relationship with your Lord. But for them, they make statements like Tawheed al hakamiya that the Tawheed regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right uh, in rulership, that this is the most important issue, that the other issues are in fact small in comparison to this issue. How they come up with this claim, we don't see that coming from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not meaning that that is not important. And no one from amongst the Muslims, bi idnillah, unless someone is par perhaps new to Islam and total ignorant of Islam, would say that it's permissible to rule by other than what Allah revealed. So we need to establish that first and foremost. But that is really not the issue and the contention here. The contention is when a person leaves the fold of Islam and when they are in the fold of Islam. Because the neo Khawarij and the many Takfiri Jihadi groups that are out there, they claim that whenever someone rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, that they are, have left the fold of Islam. And they will bring you a barrage of statements from even some of the classical scholars, some of our salaf. What is problematic though, Ahabatifillah, is their istidlal, is how they use those statements to make their hukum or their ruling and how they due to ignorance and due to ta'wil ta fasid use those very statements to bring about false uses uses of the statements of the salaf and the 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 evidence from the quran and the sunnah the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and their false interpretation of those statements and evidences and this is our area of contention and I want to advise myself and my brothers and sisters to be cautious when going to the internet. That you'll find countless compilations, even people who claim to be from Ahl Sunnah, and people who are respected in various communities with statements about these issues. But subhanAllah, in my short, recent, coming back to the uh, recent research in coming back into this issue as it was requested from me I found that so many individuals speaking about this issue with so many open flaws that the lay person would never know because they bring you a barrage of what appears to be evidences but they don't give you the full information because you're reliant upon the translations you're relying upon whatever part of the text they translate for you. So many statements of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah they bring, but they don't bring the other statements of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and we're going to begin by trying to give you a more balanced and correct interpretation based on Kitab wa Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf, not based upon something that's from me. Ahabatifillah. A last thing I want to point out is beware of the general statements uh, with the exclusion to the specific evidences. Because I found one particular document, it's called Salaf's Quotes on Kufr of Man-Made Law, that someone translated. And they brought a lot of beautiful translation of parts of text from the ulama of this religion, from the past up until the present. 
but they put their own specific details which totally took what was being said by those great imams out of context and only supported their religion of takfir and rebellion and thawrat and chaos and spreading that evil throughout the Muslim land. Ruling according to the human law as opposed to the divine law. One of the major sins which come sometimes, sometimes, can take one out of the fold of Islam is ruling by other than the divine law, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Scholars from the time of the companions, of the Prophet ﷺ, until now, have some specific differences regarding when ruling by human laws constitutes major disbelief. Meaning, that sometimes it takes you out of the fold of Islam, sometimes it doesn't. But now it's upon me to give you evidence for this. Because this, for those people, will not be sufficient. Classical scholars agree that at times ruling by other than divine law takes one outside of the fold of Islam. And at other times it's a major sin. The minor kufr, which does not expel one from the religion. Where do we get this hukum from? This issue alone is a subject of great debate. The scholars of uh, Tafsir explain in the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whosoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, such are the disbelievers. And in another verse, Ulaika humul fasikun, ulaika humul valimun, that they are uh, fasikun, uh, fas wicked doers, uh, valimun, they are wicked oppressors. Uh, oppressors. These are all ayat of the Quran. Uh, with regards to the verse, this is not the place, uh, the, the, the qawl or rajih with the, regard to this meaning of this verse is that it's general, meaning that if you're not ruling your family by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, by, by the sharia, you're not ruling not just your government, you're not ruling your, uh, your job, whatever, everything in your life should be in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. That is what it means, divine laws, meaning that this is not specific to the ruler, unlike those Ahla Bida claim. So these verses are general in their applicability. And with regards to this issue, as we mentioned, that sometimes it's a major sin and sometimes, uh, and sometimes it's a major sin taking you out of the fold of Islam, and sometimes it's a major sin, which is a type of wickedness, a type of oppression, etc. Regarding these details, we have the statement of our salaf of this ummah, radiyallahu ta'ala'inu majma'in, like Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala'inuhuma, and Ta'us rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the tabi'in. And he said in explaining, because we'll go back to their tafsir before we go down, to any contemporaries. They said, regarding this verse, this is not the disbelief that constitutes infidelity. Instead, if he rules by other than divine law, then he has committed an act of disbelief. And this is not like the one who disbelieves in the last day. Meaning that Ibn Abbas, and the Tabi'in, that they regarded this, the ruling with regards to the one who rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, whether it be democracy, whether it be whatever, that this is uh, a type of kufr. But this is the lesser kufr if, depending on the state of the ruler, we'll just stop there, depending on the state of the ruler. This is what we can deduce from this kufr. Also, this statement forms the foundation of the orthodox position as it is from some of the earliest scholars who explain the Quran. It should be noted that it appears they distinguish between major and minor disbelief in the above statement. Another classical scholar, another one of the tabi'in, Atta said in his tafsir of this ayat, and you can find this in uh, tafsir of Bagawi, he said, it is disbelief less than disbelief and tyranny less than tyranny and wickedness less than wickedness. Letting us know they distinguish the Salaf, they distinguish between <clears throat> in the same act of ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, 
that they distinguish, meaning that sometimes it takes you out of the fold of Islam and sometimes it does not. This is where we differ with the Khawarij and the Takfiris and groups like ISIS and Boko Haram and other, and Akhwan al-Muslimin and other groups who espouse the claim that whenever someone rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that they're a disbeliever. That we say no, there is a lot of tafsil, a lot of de details with regards to this issue. It's not as black and white as you'd like it to be. And there's your delil from the Salaf. That's from the Salaf of this Ummah. If you have problems, then you need to take it to Ibn Abbas. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Tabi'een. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Jameen. So here we find that they distinguished between the types of disbelief, the types of fists, the types of uh, wickedness, the types of oppression. Ikrama, another tabi'i, known for his uh, tafsir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said the meaning of this verse, this is what Ikrama said, rahmatullahi, rahmatan wasi'a, alayhi. He said the meaning of this verse is whoever does not rule by divine law while rejecting it has disbelieved. And whoever agrees with it, but does not rule by it, then he is an oppressive sinner. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This you can find in Tafsir, uh, tafsir al Bahui. And the, the, these are my translations. This is from my research uh, for my master's thesis. And you will find this on page 381 in the 2002 edition of Tafsir. Imam Baghawi. Which tafsir? Tafsir Imam Baghawi. And this is a statement of who? Ikrama, one of the tabi'een. So here we have various statements of the tabi'een letting us know how the salaf of this ummah, how the salaf, we're talking about the first three generations, how they viewed this ayat. And that is muhkam compared to, these, to any other tafsirs that you're going to bring later. That these are the ones that are mu'tabir, that are... Uh, the ones to be considered as in accordance with the uh, Kitab wa Sunnah, because the Prophet said, The best of the people is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them, letting us know the Salaf of this Ummah, that they had the most fiqh, fiddin, the, most, the best understanding of the religion. They had the best knowledge of the religion. They had the uh, they were the closest to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. Ibn al Jozi said, Rahmatullahi, and he said, and the decisive speech in this regard is that whoever does not judge by what Allah revealed, we are rejecting it in belief, jahada, and he knows that it, uh, he knows that it is revealed by Allah as the Jews did, then he is a disbeliever. So this is the one who refuses to judge. Uh, by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, he rejects it out of his stubbornness and, 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 and so forth. Similar to the way the Jews, they knew they had knowledge, but they didn't practice. And whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, inclining to his desires without rejecting it in belief, then he is an oppressive and wicked sinner. This is what Imam Ibn al Jozi said. Ibn al Qayyim. Rahmatullah said about the ruler's condition. He said, if he believes in the obligation of judging by what Allah has revealed in this situation, but turned away from it out of disobedience, and while acknowledging that he is deserving of punishment, then this is kufr al asgar. This is what Imam Ibn al Qayyim. But you'll find that these people only translate part of his statements and will say that it, the person is out of the fold of Islam. But they don't give you these statements. They don't give you these statements. By Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi Again, if he believes in the obligation of judging by what Allah has revealed in this situation, but turned away from it out of disobedience while acknowledging that he is deserving of punishment, then this is kufr al askar And if he believes that it is not obligatory and that he has a choice in the matter, along with his firm belief that it is the judgment of Allah, then this is kufr al-akbar. And if he was ignorant in the matter, or made an error, then he is one of the people, the mukhti'een. Mukhti'een. Uh, he's, he's a mukhti. He's one who, who erred, or you know, committed a, a mistake. And his ruling is the same for those who err. So letting us know, Habitatillah, 
that this sin is one of, is a great sin. And it, as Ibn al-Qayyim highlights in many of his treaties, that this is one of the tawaqeet, is the one who rules by other than what Allah revealed. But where the issue at hand is not about ruling according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine law in the Sharia or not, that's not the issue. Because the Tikfiris and Ahlul Sunnah agree that you must rule. Everyone from amongst the Muslims agrees to this, except for those people who are totally ignorant of the religion and those people who are pretty much outside of the fold of Islam. Either they're totally ignorant of the hukum, but other than that, and when it comes to anyone from uh, the people of knowledge, from Ahlul and even from Akhwan of Islamin, even from Jamaat Tablik, even from the Dio Bundi, even from uh, probably the extreme Sufis, most of them that, that are in the, we're talking about the ones that are in the fold of Islam, that haven't left the fold of Islam, then they are in agreement with this. That you must rule by the Sharia. But the issue at hand again, to highlight this issue, is whether someone is in the fold of Islam or not. What do we see about leader so-and-so? What do we see about leader so-and-so? And... -so? and just to bring this point up, again, that's not our business. Meaning that is not our wadifa. That is the wadifa of the ulama. That's the wadifa of ahl al-ilm, al-hilm, wa'akt. That is the, the, the job of those people who have knowledge and fiqh and basira and can make fatwa about these issues. But it's not for even the uh, talab al-ilm, uh, um, especially beginning suits of knowledge and others, to make these types of rulings and to busy the people who are in lands of disbelief with these rulings. You need to know about Husni Mubarak, you need to know about this one, you need to know about this one, but you can't pray in the masjid five times a day. But you can't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the correct tawheed, no. That's not what you should invite and call the people to and busy the people to. People need to learn their Islam. From amongst the contemporary scholars, and there's so many, but let's just skip to some that you might be more familiar with. Let's look to uh, the, the Imam Fozan. And I read some of the statements before we go into this where they translated because they were trying to refute the Salafis with, in this one particular article that I saw. So he brought some beautiful kalam of the Ahmed uh, Dawa, you know, from Sheikh, you know, uh, some of the Salaf, also from the Ahmed uh, Dawa, meaning the 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 students and of uh, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah Taala, and also up until you know Imam Fozan and, and so forth, some of our Imams now, and so they try to use these statements. They take some of his statements, but Ahl Sunnah takes the general statements, and applies them with the specific t statements, look, meaning looking at all the evidences. You don't take something that's a general verse and then you just try to apply it, but you don't look at other verses that explain it in detail. Or other evidences, delil from the Quran and the Sunnah, to explain a verse or to explain a, a, a principle in the religion. But some people, they take whatever they understand, they take a general statement, and they apply it how they deemed to apply it. Let's look at what Sheikh Salim bin Fozan says here from his own words and some of the tafsil about this issue. Imam Fozan said, so apostasy is not pronounced on everyone who rules by other than what Allah has revealed. This is what Fozan said again. So apostasy is not pronounced on everyone who rules by other than what Allah has revealed. Instead, there are details in this matter between whoever sees that ruling by other than Allah's laws is better or the same as any other law, or that there is a choice between ruling by Islamic law or not. Then this one is judged as a disbeliever outside of Islam. That's what Sheikh Salim bin Fozan said. Imam bin Baz said, Rahmatullahi, he, when describing, he said, uh, and this is a paraphrase of what he said. Likewise, the one who believes it is permissible to rule by another law apart from Islamic law is also a disbeliever, even if he believes Islamic law is better. However, Ben Baz held that the one who rules from his desires or out of fear, making judgments to please others based on bribery or for some other reason, is a major sinner still in the fold of Islam. In addition, Ben Baz also made this uh, condition regarding the ruler or concluded, deduced this from the, the text. He says, uh, and he knows 
uh, he knows he is disobedient to Allah and that it is obligatory upon him to rule by Allah's law. Imam al wadi Shaykhana, Shaykh Mukbil, Rahmatullah he said, if someone makes permissible what Allah has made unlawful, and he is knowledgeable of what he does, and he is not forced, then he disbelieves. Whoever makes judgments due to bribery has not become a disbeliever, because again, that means they've ruled by other than what Allah has revealed. But he has committed a major sin. And that's, that's a very important what our Shaykh, uh, what he pointed out, letting us know that when someone, uh, that, for example, if you take a bribe in a judgment, that's supposed to be a Sharia law. And I've had this happen to me in a Sharia, supposedly a Sharia court, where the person had already uh, was paying the judge to go against me, to rule against me. And they tried to, uh, uh, they were in co, you know, they were working together, the the person making the claim against me and the uh, the judge. And the person actually paid off the judge. We actually were able to witness that. And the judge pretended that he didn't know English or Arabic language because I had to deal with him in those two languages. So I had to use a translator in a third language. And the translator also translated and said, I'm sorry, the judge is taking a bribe from the, this person making this claimant. The point meaning that even with that, we don't make takfir of that judge because of his desires of his bribery. And he was making an arbitration in accordance with his desires according to his pocketbook rather than the sharia and the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and going with the truth. So the shahid, this is a, a, a direct thing that I've witnessed in my life with regards to what Imam al-Wad'i was saying. Ibn al-Qayyim said, then the issue of making something lawful is doing something, believing it to be lawful. This is imperative. This is istihlal. Uh, istihlal, making the lawful to be unlawful. It's not just simply that you do this. For example, if someone were to uh, if someone were to uh, drinks alcohol, okay, or smokes weed, and they say, I enjoy this activity, and they're doing it a lot, they do it every day, that is not istihla, that is not making it lawful. Likewise, the government that allows for riba banks to operate in their country, which you find in all the Muslim countries, unfortunately, may Allah guide us in them. This does not take them out of the full Islam because this is not making the lawful unlawful. Why, you ask? Let's look at the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim to clarify this. Ibn al-Qayyim said, then the issue of making something lawful is doing something, believing it to be lawful. So again, aqidah is, and creed is involved. Ittiqad. This is an issue of ittiqad. Istihlal is not simply doing a sin. Otherwise, every time you committed a sin, that is, and a sin meaning it goes against the sharia, then you'd be making istihlal. And especially if it's repetitive. But no, that's false. None of the... Uh, uh, the, the the Salaf understood istihlal to be being repetitive in a sin. Repetitiveness. If you smoke weed every day, you're doing a, 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 a wicked sin every day. You're committing zina every day. But that doesn't mean you're making it lawful. But if you begin to believe that that's a lawful thing, that it's okay for you, that's then you've made istihlal and that takes a person out of the fold of Islam. I hope that's clear there. There is so much to say about this issue, and it's, it, it, I can't give it its hop in a simple uh, thing, and there's so many statements I've highlighted, so we'll, we'll leave this as the beginning, and we'll come back to it, and we'll bring some of the, some of the other things to deal with some of the shubahat, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiya wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.